So I'm embroidering on a bear. I love doing it. However, I don't have anywhere near a good amount of practice, um, but I still really enjoy doing it. So this is just a very beginner guide to embroidering. Um, it's more focused on the bear stuff. There's lots of really talented people um, with lots of embroidery tutorials that I recommend you check out. Um, but this is more just the thinking process for when you are embroidering on a bear. So in my uh, blog guide, uh, I mentioned that it's best to start off embroidering on the paw pads of your bear, so the foot and the hand pads, definitely. Because if you want to embroider on the body or the, the limbs of the bear itself, then there's sort of two uh, issues that that can cause. So first is your fabric choice. If you want, if you want to have a nice fluffy teddy, then you can't be embroidering on this. It'll just disappear into all of the fur and trimming the fur in large areas can look quite odd and quite unsightly. So this bear would not be suitable um, for having any sort of embroidery done on him. However, his foot pads would be. This is just a sort of simple velvet um, upholstery fabric. Instead, if you wanted to be doing embroidery on the main body of the bear, uh, then in, like in this little pig, you would have to use something with no pile, very straightforward, very smooth, uh, but that can run into challenges of um, making the seams look neat. And you also need to think about where you're placing the embroidery on the body. So on this pig, he doesn't have a center seam. So you could embroider a nice big design here. However, embroidering on the side would be difficult because you may be obstructed by the arm or the leg once they're put on even just in the actual movement of the arm. If you had a design here, it would be hidden most of the time. So that's why I recommend embroidering on the, the foot pads and the hand pads of the bear to get you started. So if you are going to be doing embroidery on the, the paw pads of the bear, trace them out onto your fabric first. So that's what this dark black outline is. And then trace out the design that you want. So I've just marked the seam allowance um, of this bear, this mock-up bear uh, with pencil, but in reality, you wouldn't bother drawing that in. It's just to bear in mind that you can't put your design right up against this black line because once you stitch it, it'll disappear. And that's pretty important, particularly if you're doing things like letters or numbers or so on. I've just got a very simple flower design here. Like I said, this isn't so much an embroidery tutorial as it is thinking about embroidery on a bear. So I've managed to fit all of my pieces onto this one uh, swatch that I can put in my hoop, um, which is convenient. And I'm just going to use these three embroidery colors. I'm going to use the stem stitch for these stems here and down here. And then I'm just going to use the simple petal stitch in this purple uh, for the flowers. And then I'm going to do a little French knot in the center out of this yellow. So I'm going to start with the stems. And generally speaking, like I said, I'm not an expert at embroidery. I generally just use all six strands that come in the embroidery thread. These are very easy to separate threads. Unless I'm doing something very, very small, like a miniature bear, I will use three. Um, but otherwise, I just use it as it comes. You'll want to use a thicker needle, obviously, just to make it easier for you to pull it through. Um, and you may also find that you need a pair of uh, pliers if your fabric is relatively thick um, or your needle is not thick enough to help push uh, this thick thread through. I'm just using this um, cotton here, this unbleached cotton. Uh, however, felt is also an excellent option because it doesn't fray. Uh, you just need something with sturdy enough fibers that it's gonna be able to put up with these stitches. Your stitches um, threads aren't gonna show through the fabric and so on. You'll just learn with uh, time and practice uh, as to what you like embroidering on. So like I said, I'm gonna start with this stem. I generally work with a length that's uh, just a little bit longer than sort of my forearm in length. 
um, otherwise you run the risk of tangles and so on. It's better to just do it in small increments and trying to get it all done in one long run. So I'm going to tie a small knot in the back of my embroidery thread and I just actually tie it as a little loop just because that makes it even wider uh, to prevent it pulling through the fabric um, on the other side and that's just how we will secure it. So I'm going to start at the bottom here and I'm going to uh, work my way up the top using that stem stitch or a variant of I'm using a stitch length of about half a centimeter. And remember that your pencil drawings are just a guide. Um, try to make them as faint as you can so that if you ever decide that you want to sit the flower a little bit differently or so on, that you can just sort of brush it off um, very easily and it's not very visible um, compared to obviously this Sharpie pen which I just used so that you can see exactly where my pattern pieces are. So I've just finished that stem stitch. I'm currently right up at the top. So again, I'm going to do that little loop knot in the end of the, of the thread so that it doesn't pull through. Just a little slip knot like that. I'm going to start from the center, make a loop, and then I'm going to be securing the excess of that loop essentially uh, to create a quick flower petal. So I leave this excess out, that's going to be the flower petal itself. And then where my needle is currently pointing, I need a small stitch to help hold that thread loop down. So I'm going to head back in very close to where my thread initially came out. So I insert my needle again very close to that uh, first stitch. And then before I pull this all the way tight, I'm going to make another stitch where I want the petal to end, which is about here. So I'm just going to come out here. And I'm actually going to pass my needle through this big loop that we've made from our first stitch. And you can see that as I pull that, it's secured by this secondary stitch that we just created. And to finish that off, I'm just going to reinsert my needle very close to where I came out this second time. There we go. So now that petal is secured. Now I can pop up in the center again and carry this on to complete the rest of the flower. So I've just finished the last of the petals. My thread's on the back here. And just like before, I'm going to secure it. However, I'm not just going to create an additional stitch because I can avoid that by using some of the loops that we've created back here. So I'm just actually going to pass over. I'm just actually going to pass under one of these uh, excess loops that we have. And with this remaining thread, I'm just going to again create that double knot. Pull that nice and snug and then snip it off with a small tail. So now our flower just needs a little yellow center. French knot, the same procedure. I've got my uh, slip knot at the end for security and I'm going to pass up right through the center. And then right near the site of the stitch, I'm going to wrap the thread around my needle a couple of times. I recommend up to about four, uh, otherwise you can have quite a loop that can um, come unraveled. So I'm just going to do about three loops and then pass in very close to where you first emerged.
pull that through and as you pull snug you have secured those three loops that you made. So I'm just going to do that once or twice more. I'm just going to come out just over here. I'm just going to wrap this twice and pass back through. So there we go. It's a very simple little flower. And again, I'm just going to use this created loop to secure my work. So, with all of these other pieces embroidered, take it out of the loop, cut out your pattern pieces as normal, and then treat them like any other um, pattern piece, sew them all together, and then I think that's just an excellent way to create a very custom bear. You can do lettering, birth years, graduation years, patterns, favourite flowers, it's really quite infinite. Um, and you can also do your own uh, patterns if you don't like any of the patterns that are available in the store. Do your own embroidered pattern. I've done that with very small flowers in a sort of random scattered pattern and it's really quite effective.